Let me tell you kids about my CPAP story. You wanna hear about that? I originally wanted to do a more professional video where I just sit down and, you know, show you guys my equipment and you know all that stuff, but I'll just I'll just tell you really quick about it. Um, so I, I, I got into trucking, at least over the road. Uh, 2012? 2013? 2012? Anywho, I was with CR England. And they measured Fat Boy over here. And of course I'm fat. And they're interested in your neck size. Your, your, they calculate your BMI. And uh, which put me in the category of we're going to sign off on your DOT physical and you're only good for three months. Uh, and then, I don't know if at that time if they said you need to go contact your doc doctor and get a sleep study test or we'll do it for you. I don't remember if that was part of it or not, but what they did was put me on a safety hold about a week before my thing expired and put me through a sleep study test. And... Uh, you know, parked the truck and my partner at the time, he needed to take some time off and it was fine. Excuse me, I have to yawn. I can't, I can't stop yawning. Oh, it's only 12.30 at night. Why am I yawning? Jeez. See, I told you I needed a CPAP machine. But here's the thing, at the time I didn't. Uh, they bust us over to a nice little motel and and uh, we got set up and and if I can find the picture I I think I can find the picture if I if I found the picture it's right here that's me with all them wires and sensors and and all that crap if you look close my loyalty to CR England was so much that I was wearing a CR England t-shirt the only reason I had CR England t-shirts because I was too lazy to do laundry and I was like eh, let's walk into the uh, driver lounge center there and buy ourselves a $44 t-shirt because <laughs> I'm too lazy to do laundry <laughs> we're so I go to that little hotel room, they, they wire me up, I sleep. Next morning they're like, okay, here's the results and stuff, and and uh, we'll bus you back to CR England and you can get back on your truck. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And uh, they still had to do a physical, you know, and, and they denied me a physical. They're like, no, your results were inconclusive, you need to go back another day. And so I faxed my results to my doctor and the doctor looked at it and said yeah you don't need a CPAP machine you're you're fine you, you were sleeping in a motel and these are the numbers that you got and I was like yeah he's like no you're you're okay so I came back the next day and they did another test all the little sensors and all the wires and all that crap and then the next morning, instead of handing me my results paperwork, they handed me this bag with this machine in it. And uh, we're pulling up on the inspection station here, the bug station. These are pretty easy to get through. Um, they recognize my truck here. So they will possibly uh, just wave me on, on through, wave me on by. Can I get a wave? Can I get a wave? Can someone flash me? Hey. Good people. To be honest, they don't care about me because I'm not hauling hay or uh, refrigerated or anything like that. So they're, they're not too worried about me. And they know trucks on this route are more than likely just going to Portland or wherever. Uh, where was I? Yes. The, the test w was complete on the second time and she's sitting there with this, with this bag, with, with this machine. She goes, okay, uh, here's your machine. And I was just like, what do you mean? 
I was like, I, I sent yesterday's test results to my doctor, and he says I was perfectly fine. He goes, well, our test result says you you weren't you you gotta you gotta take the sleep, the CPAP machine. And I was like, uh, no, I'm not going to. I said, well, you have to. We we're gonna sign here. You either pay forty six hundred dollars up front, cash right now, or we add. Uh, I think it was forty eight dollars a week to your truck payment. And I was like. If this is required for my employment, for my job, then my health insurance will cover this. And she says, no, it doesn't work like that. And I says, yes, it does. And you can keep your fucking machine. And so I walk out of there and I told my my dispatcher, my driver manager at the time, keep in mind, I was a lease operator. And I says, you know, they're trying to force this fucking machine on me when my doctor says it's not required. Uh, and he goes, well, let me patch you on through to the, to the health director. And I tore into this lady and I was like, seriously, you're going to try to force some medical equipment on me and tarnish my medical record to where I, I can only have a one year physical for the rest of my life because you guys are pushing a goddamn machine on me that I don't need, that I can afford through my own health insurance if I needed it. And she's and I was like, you're really going to lose a driver that makes 7,100 miles a week running team for CR England? And uh, she's like, uh, uh, I, I need to, uh, I'll call you back. And I guess somebody higher up in the system called me, you know, one of the, one of the England boys, one of the, one of the Mormon mafia because uh, you know we respect your service to our company, and we do apologize for this mis- misunderstanding. Um, you can go ahead and use your own medical card that you got uh, to come to see our England. We're not going to use. We're not going to worry about ours. Uh, please go back to your truck and, and continue. I was like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> So I'd, I'd ruffled enough feathers, you know, to get out of the friggin' CPAP crap. Oh, I was pissed. I just, it's bad enough that I'm paying. At the time, uh, when you figure in the the mileage pay and all that crap, I, I spent $117,000 a year on that goddamn Cascadia. 2012 Cascadia, the 13. You know, it was the first of the Evo trucks, so it had the big fairings and, and all that crap. They didn't have the Evo motor. Uh, beautiful truck. Man, I like that truck. We got a picture of it. I'll show it here. Uh, but, yeah. I had had enough of CR England by then. And keep in mind, they had those trucks governed to 63 miles an hour. And, uh, and I fixed that. There's a product that comes out of Canada called Faster Trucks you plug it in to the vehicle speed sensor on the back of the transmission and you adjust it here so you adjust your speed on your with this little dial you adjust it to 58 miles an hour and then you can drive by the pedals fast as you friggin want and uh, I I'd, I'd do about you know I'd watch my GPS speed I do about 72 and uh, man I was making I was making 8,000 mile weeks <laughs> And just, oh, my fuel mileage was absolute crap. Yeah, you don't want to push a Cascadia over 68 miles an hour. They, fuel mileage goes to crap real quick. But, uh, yeah, I friggin', man, that truck ran. I ran that truck hard. But, yeah, I've, I've never been one for compliance. Especially when I'm paying so much money for your stupid-ass truck. Anywho. But I did eventually have to use a CPAP machine. I had to get one um, a few years ago. I was working days. So I was, you know, I'm at my home. I'm sleeping at home every other day. I had a route going back and forth to Southern California. And about, I'd start about 10 o'clock in the morning. So I got to sleep in and, and all that. And about halfway, halfway through the route, I'd start falling asleep. And I did that crap for almost a year where no matter, no matter how much sleep I got, 
how many energy drinks, everything. It didn't matter. I I would I would start falling asleep. And it got it got pretty bad a couple times. I remember I was driving along and the route that I was on, they they repaved some of it, so they had that big old truck that sprays the asphalt uh, oil, whatever you want to call it, right? And uh, the previous day, he was out, and, and I was the first person behind him or something. I Anyway, I, for some reason, I remembered that truck, and I was cruising along on a two-lane highway kind of like this, you know, and the, the road turned, like, dark black, braid sprayed and I hallucinated that that truck was at the end of that was you know spraying the the asphalt and I slammed on the brakes in a panic thinking I was going to run into the back of that that asphalt truck and you know I, I, I pulled off the side of the road and I was like oh crap you know what the hell and that spooked me and then another I would want to say a couple months after that, I was driving along, and I left SoCal, and I was going up, I was going across the 58 uh, to get to the 395 to avoid uh, Atalanto and all that stuff, on, and I'm cruising along, and I was, I was tucked in on a line of RVs, I had about three RVs behind me and one in front of me, I was just kind of cruising along with my new, my new friends, you know? And I remember for some reason, I was kind of daydreaming. And I reached over here and, you know, I was just Cascadia. And, and, I, and I just reached over here and, and I pulled the knob off the radio. And the next thing I remember, I was in the desert, driving across the dirt. And I don't... I, I panic, I slam on the brakes, bring the truck to a stop, and I'm I'm 300 foot out in the desert. I missed all the, the Joshua trees, all the. I kept the truck upright. The dust settled, and and a couple of the RVs had stopped, you know, and uh, they come over to check on me, and they're like, "Yeah, dude, we just watched you." You were weaving for a little bit, and then you just made a turn out in the desert, and we didn't know uh, we didn't know what happened to you. And I was just like, "Yeah, man, I, I just had an episode. I'm, you know, I'm I'm fine." I got the truck back on the side of the road, and and called my boss, and told him, "Hey, I don't know if you've seen it in the dash cam," and he's like, "Yes, we did." <laughs> And I said, uh, I'm okay now. I'm awake. I'm kind of shocked. And he's like, yes, we are too. And he's, and I was like, I obviously need to go see a doctor tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, please do. It, it was because he said that I was sleeping with my eyes open. He never seen my eyes closed. And, uh, my roommate at the time, he, uh, well, I was roommate was with him. He owned the house. I'm the roommate. Uh, <laughs> uh, his he he had a, a, a nice doctor and stuff, and he put in a good word for me. Turns out, this doctor is related to my lawyer, so <laughs> I I had two good references to get in because at that time in Reno, it was very hard to get in get in with a doctor. They're all pretty much booked out. Um, everybody's been moving to Reno from the Bay Area. So it's very hard to get a doctor. Uh, we've, we've had a population explosion. Um, so she checked me out and, and all that. And set me up for a uh, sleep study and, and all that crap. And I went and saw my, what do they call that, a pulmonologist. And he goes, dude... You're the worst uh, sleep apnea I've ever seen. And I've been in this industry for like 20 years. He said that, and, and here's the thing too, is like like I've had a few girlfriends that like, I'd wake up in the morning and I look over and they're just like deer in the headlights. It's like, you stop breathing. Like, 
like for like 10 minutes. I was like, oh, I'm okay. Uh, in reality, I was not okay. Uh, on average, I have 117 waking moments per hour. Uh, according to the sleep study, I never fell into REM sleep. And to be honest with you, it would take me on average about 16 hours to get four hours of sleep. Like a good, a good sleep for me would be 14 to 16 hours. And uh, I would finally somehow get some rest and be okay. So yeah, sleep apnea is pretty friggin' pretty friggin' serious, you know? Um, and I coordinated my CPAP use with getting on a, a diet and losing some weight and all that stuff, which I desperately need to get back on to doing that. Uh, but the CPAP machine totally transformed my life. It, uh, it improved my mood and my energy levels and my ability to do my job and and it totally it absolutely saved my life so I, uh, I I use it very religiously I I get my six to seven hours of sleep and I am good to go um, especially on these situations where you know say you're an owner operator and uh, just say, uh, you know, uh, the work-life schedule is a little crazy and you stay up for 48 hours in a row. Uh, CPAP machine, I'm good. Six or seven hours of sleep, I can do I can do 48 hours. Come on now, it's easy. Uh, don't recommend that. I offer no medical uh, advice or legal advice or trucking advice. Actually, do not listen to anything I say. <laughs> But yeah, and uh, the CPAP machine I have is the Dream Station, which I guess got recalled. Uh, it's got a little humidifier unit with it and stuff, which I don't use a whole lot. Uh, I use it when I'm at home. I do, I try to use it here on the truck, but it's extra hassle to deal with, you know, bringing distilled water. I just, I don't like being hassled. I hate hassles probably why I'm alone all the time because I hate freaking hassles the drama but that's my uh, my little CPAP story there so you know if if you if you legitimately need one and it's disturbing your life like you're not getting enough sleep and, and your work is suffering and all that stuff look into getting a CPAP it's not it's not that big of an ordeal, especially if you're a big guy like me and, and all that. Um, but yeah, and you know, one day I might lose enough weight or, you know, shed some of these pounds and get rid of this, this neck fat here and, and I might not need one. No, I might be a, a regular human being that can go camping and stuff. God, that would be nice. That, that's the biggest thing I hate about the CPAP machine is that it's always there with me. It's my life support, you know. And even on my epic motorcycle get lost trip last month, uh, it just felt weird to have a goddamn CPAP machine everywhere I went, you know. I couldn't just check into a, a campground somewhere, set up a tent, you know. I mean, actually, I, I guess I could have, really. Um, but I packed really light from a motorcycle trip, so I. You know, there was no tenting or anything like that. You know, there's there's campground sites that have electricity. As I take a sip of poisonous, uh, carbonated and sugar liquid. So yeah, that's my little CPAP story for you kids. Hope everything's going good in your lives. Uh, we'll get through this time of year and everything will be fine okay anywho thanks for watching uh give it a like give it a subscribe lets me lets me know you care and it keeps me motivated i don't mind making videos but you know if i think there's an audience watching it and it doesn't bother me to uh 
make more. So yeah, catch you kids later.